about that, guys? Oh, there we go. Guys in the back, you okay? All right. Show of hands. Who wants to be successful in life? Outstanding. How about... Are you kidding me? All right. We got a few, a few naysayers. That's okay. Who wants to have failure in life? Okay, can I tell you the truth? Those things go together. You cannot succeed without going through failure because failure is going to happen to all of us. I see a lot of young folks in the audience and a few people like you, sir, maybe my age, which is good. I'm glad you're here. Make me feel better. But the truth is, when you get to my age, you realize that life is hard and failure is unavoidable. Let's talk about this a little bit. Now, ha. Huh. As I say, let's talk. I think I got a PowerPoint loud loaded up. If somebody can get that PowerPoint going. Here we go. All right. The ultimate challenge is finding success for yourself and overcoming failure to achieve. So I'm going to rip through this stuff. You can read faster than I can talk. Some kind of interesting things. I've had. I've been very blessed to do these this this kind of stuff. Also, I tell you, I've had some pretty significant failures. Some very significant failures. I've been fired. Okay. And in Silicon Valley that happens, but let me tell you, it's no fun. Okay. Also, my own father abandoned me. And not only did he abandon me when I was young, he wrote me a letter saying, son, I'm leaving. I never want to hear from you. I never want to talk to you. I never want to have anything to do with you again for the rest of my life. Let me tell you, that's tough. So what I want to say here first is what is success? What is success for you? You know, I, I was honored to graduate from the Harvard Business School, graduated from Dartmouth College, same as my daughter. You know, those are places that have a definition of success. You have a definition of success. Probably your mom and dad have it for you. Your society has it for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the most important thing is what is your definition? What is it? I'm challenging you to think about it. And you've got to think about it in more than just financial terms. A lot of people think, well, I want to be a billionaire, an all-time millionaire. You know, okay, but that's very unidirectional. Think about it in terms of family. Do you want to have a family? Maybe not, that's okay. But if you want to have a family, you know, you got to think about that. Friendship, career, legacy. So here's a, I, I am, I do teach at Peking University. I teach Harvard, Stanford, and Dartmouth. So, uh, here, I'm going to give you a little homework assignment. Who wants a homework assignment? No, of course. But nevertheless, it's okay. So, I want you to write these things. I want you to take time. Some you don't have to do it now. But I want you to think deep about what kind of person you want to be in 20 or 30 or 40 years. What kind of person do you want to be? Don't just think, I want to be a millionaire. That's not enough. I'm telling you, I'm there. Okay? I'm a lot older than most of you, and by God's grace, we've had some financial success. It's not enough to just say, I want to be a millionaire. What kind of family do you want to have? If you want to have a family, you know, you need a spouse, right? And you need to make time to raise that family, and that's not easy. What kind of friend do you want to be? For me, friendships are a beautiful, beautiful thing. Beautiful. Joan Lee, right here. Love this guy. Dear, dear friend. And uh, so important. Friendship. So think about these things. What type of, you know, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want to accomplish career-wise? And that doesn't mean I'm going to go to Goldman Sachs and make, you know, $100 million or whatever. Maybe you want to be a U.S. Army officer or do something totally different. You know, a great thing about life, if you love what you're doing, you never have to go to work. You know what I'm saying? Love what you're doing, you never have to go to work. So, here's a little homework assignment. That's the last one I have for you. Write it down, but then here's the key. Don't just write it down and put it in a drawer somewhere. Write it down, choose a couple of friends, people who really love you, people who care for you, and share those with them. Get their feedback. Maybe they say, Gregory, why do you want to do that? That's not something that really is exciting for you. Or, or maybe they say, oh, Gregory, that's fantastic. That's exactly what you should do. Whatever it is, share it with some friends, and you'll keep refining, keep thinking about it. Now, once you have these goals, of course, the question is, how are you going to achieve them? 
right? Because it's one thing to write down, gee, I want to be uh, happily, I want to have a wonderful family at the age of 50, I want to have a, I want to be a lawyer or whatever it is, I want to be known as one of the best lawyers in Hong Kong. Those things are all good, but how are you going to achieve them? Let me just quickly suggest you need three things, like any journey. If I'm going to travel to Beijing from Hong Kong, I need three things. I need a good map, I need some allies, and I need to write quick. Let's quickly go through that. So the right map is what I call the noble family vision. Now, I told you about my father. I told you my American dad abandoned me and my brothers, and it was super painful. I got to tell you, still many, many years later, still you know, working through that. But one of the things that it made me realize that I wanted to be a much better dad than my father, and I wrote this book, Be a Better Dad, today. There's a bunch of them out in the back, uh, outside, in English, in traditional Chinese, and in simplified Chinese also. In fact, this is the first fatherhood book ever published by Zhongxing by City Press, China's second largest publisher. The reason I'm talking about it is that there's a whole chapter on noble family vision. Whether you're a dad or your mom or you're not married or something, you can learn a lot about how to craft a noble life vision for yourself, a map. Where do you want to go, and how are you going to get there? Right? But that's not enough. You need close friends. I already told you, right? Failure is going to happen. And remember when I got fired? I mean, you don't remember, but I sure did. When I got fired, the best thing I will never forget, coming home that night, I called my wife, called my tata, and I told her, <laughs> No, but I, you know something, I, I also was adopted by a Chinese-American family. That's a whole other story. And that's why I love China, that's why I love Chinese people, that's why I'm here. Because my Chinese family really saved my life. That's a whole other story. But I came home, I called my Tai Tai, I told her what happened, and she had got all the kids, the kids were really young, they got them all lined up at the door. And so I walked in, and my little 10-year-old girl, who's now a U.S. Army officer, she came up and she gave me a big hug. Oh, Dad, I love you so much. You're such a good dad. And don't worry about what happened at work. It's okay. We still love you. And let me tell you, it's a wonderful thing. You, you need some allies. You know, family, friends, people who love you, and hopefully your mom and dad. But you need some allies for the journey. And then you need the right equipment. The right priorities. You know, nobody climbs Mount Everest without equipment. Nobody drives to Beijing or gets to Beijing without equipment. Equipment in this case is a little bit different. It's not necessarily hardware, it's more software. The right priorities, the right worldview, intellectual assets, commitment to integrity. You know, these are all important for the long term. And unfortunately, I'd love to talk about each one of these things. And some of my lectures at Harvard and Stanford and stuff, I, I talk a lot about this stuff. But unfortunately, I don't really have time today. Uh, if you're interested, you know, do pick up a copy of the book. 100% of the proceeds go to charity, a charity called Family First Greater China that we've set up in honor of my Chinese family. It's a long story. But anyway. So again, what do you need for that journey? You need the map, right? the vision. You need the allies, the people, people who love you, who, are, who care for you. And you need the equipment. That's key. But there's one other thing you need, and that's you need the ability to deal with failure. A lot of, a lot of kids your age, especially in America, there's a degree of pride that is, you know, in a lot of American college students, you know, they're 21 years old, but they, somehow they think they've seen it all, you know, or at, at Harvard Business School where I teach, and they, and they're sure they're going to be, you know, super successful down the road. But the truth is, that doesn't always happen. And the real truth is, every single one of us goes through failure. So get ready for it, okay? Realize, don't let failure define you. That's really key. You know, it would have been easy for me to say, oh, I'm a failure, I got fired, you know, I'm a crappy CEO, I'm a crummy, you know, whatever. You can't let that happen. Failure is a learning tool. Now, you might have already recognized this, but I am a man of faith. Because my Chinese family, I was born into a totally non-faith family. But my Chinese family is a very strong Christian family. That's why they took me in and loved me. And so I'm a man of faith. I believe that failure happens because it's something we can learn from. Now, it's not easy, but there are lessons there about myself, about others, about the way life really works. 
you know, I've had some great successes. We backed Google and Salesforce.com. I think I'm the only, I think Slayton Capital is the only venture firm in the world to back those two companies really early, like A round, B round. Okay, super early. So by God's grace, we've had some real successes, but we've had some real failures too. And it's in the failures that I've learned so much more. Just to be honest, I think most of us are like that. I think most of us learn if we're, if, if we can look at failure and we can get, we can say, hey, this is an opportunity to get better or to get bitter. Make sure you get better. And that's where you need those friends. So, another thing, I, I, I forgot this one, but if you have a chance, you know, grab some friends and talk a little bit about maybe you've had some failures in your life. You know something? It's good to talk about. Don't feel like, oh, I'm the only one who's ever had this experience. You know, you're not. Everybody fails. Everybody fails. There's two things in America we never, ever talk about. Death and failure. It's so funny because those are the two things guaranteed to happen to you. Better to talk about it. Better to be honest about it. Better to learn from it. So, just to wrap this up, here's my family. I have the perfect Chinese family. Even who are some garza. One girl, three boys, and there's my tie tie right there. This is when we were in Bermuda. This is our backyard in Bermuda. So, yes, it was a nice, nice experience. But and there's my Chinese family right there, Chong Chang in English. So, and here is that book I mentioned to you, uh, a really miraculous, miraculous book. I'll tell you one story about this book because <laughs> this, you know, it's so funny that I, a guy who was abandoned by my dad would write this book, and it would become a U.S. bestseller, which was shocking. But right as I was finished, it took me three years to write this book. And see, this is one of the things in my, what, what does it mean for me to be successful in life? One of the parts of that is helping others, right? That's just, that's just part of it. And I hope that through this book, I hope that it sold about 150,000 copies so far worldwide, and all the, all the proceeds go to charity. Uh, it's dedicated to my Chinese family around the world, everywhere. It's published in 12 or 15 countries, I don't remember. But it's uh, dedicated to my Chinese family. Amazingly enough, it's the first fatherhood book ever published by Commonwealth Press in Taiwan. Here's the traditional Chinese. Commonwealth Press is the biggest business publisher in Taiwan. So it's really been exciting to see that. And uh, it's the first fatherhood book ever published by Zhongxing, by Pacific Press, so, which is pretty amazing if you know anything about the Chinese publishing market and censorship and stuff like that. It was really wonderful to see the authorities approve this and to uh, allow the book to, 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 to come out. Uh, and again, all these, all three editions are available on the back table. But, uh, here's what I'd love to do. I'd love to stay in touch with you. you know, I'm going to be out back. I'd be happy to give you a business card if you swing by just out there. But most importantly, I hope you remember just three simple things here. Three simple things. Number one, Define success for yourself. Do not let people define success for you because you'll be so disappointed. Even if you get the success, if, you're, if your definition of success, I want to be a multimillionaire, and you don't think about these other things, I guarantee you when you're 50 years old, you'll be disappointed. Even if you are a multimillionaire, you've got to define success for yourself. And then have a plan to get there. It doesn't, you know, Having a definition of success is great, but have a plan to get there. Right? For, uh, for me, the noble vision, right? the, 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 the roadmap, the friends, and the tools. Right? We talked about that. And the third thing I want you to remember is don't get defeated by failure. Failure happens to all of us, but do not be defeated. And I want to just end with the greatest speech ever given in the English language. And that was given by a gentleman named Winston Churchill, who was, of course, the Prime Minister of England. He basically saved Western civilization, in a matter of speaking, because he did not succumb to Nazi tyranny. When the Nazis had, when in the Second World War, when the Nazis controlled all of Europe, many people, even Churchill's allies, said, no, no, just leave Europe go. Just, just sign a peace treaty with the Nazis, don't let them invade England, and just let Europe go. And Winston Churchill said, we will not do that. We will not do that. We're going to stand and fight. 
greatest speech I believe ever given in the English language was about 20 years later when he was being honored for, uh, he, you know, won all these awards, obviously. And he stands up, and people expect a big, long speech because Winston Churchill legitimately one of the greatest speakers in, in the history of the 20th century. He stands up and he says three things, same thing, and this is what he said. If you forget all about me, remember Winston Churchill, and remember this. He stands up, he's an old man, he says, Never surrender. <laughs> he looks out at the audience again. There's a podium. He slams his hand on the podium. He says, Never surrender. And he looks at his audience once more right in the eye. And he says, Never 